Hi. If you would like to understand the basics of quantum key distribution, I have good news for you. It is as simple as a game of cards. But bear with me for a moment. Let's say, Alice wants to transmit a romantic message to Bob. But she wants to be absolutely certain that no other person can read the message. The best thing she can do is follows. First, she will translate her message into a binary string. Then she will take a random string of binaries that is just as long as the message itself. This shall be her encryption key. Binary addition of the message and the key will yield the cipher, the encrypted message that is transmitted to Bob. In order to decipher Alice's message, Bob uses the same key that Alice used for encryption. This protocol is proven to be information theoretically secure. That means it is unhackable, regardless of how advanced hacking technology is, or will be in the distant future. But it begs one question, how can Alice and Bob obtain a key that fulfills these strict requirements? This is exactly what quantum key distribution is used for. But how does it work? Let's play a quantum card game. Quantum playing cards come in four symbols just like normal playing cards but they have some other special properties. The most important property is that you can only identify a symbol correctly if you happen to wear goggles of the appropriate color. Now, Alice shuffles a deck of quantum cards to bring them in random order. And assigns a binary value to each card. She then sends her deck of cards to Bob who will use goggles to look at the cards and identify the symbols. Not knowing about the color of each card he has to guess which goggles to use, the black or the red ones. Wherever he used goggles of the wrong color, he will see a symbol that does not correspond to the actual card sent by Alice. Now, Alice and Bob call each other and compare the colors. Alice reveals the color, but not the symbol, of each card. Bob reveals the color of the goggles he used for each card. They will discard all the cards that were looked at through the wrong goggles. Finally they end up with an identical binary string at both sides. After some further processing, this will be their encryption key. But what happens, when Alice's deck of cards is intercepted by a malicious spy? Eve. Well, also Eve has to use goggles to identify the card symbols. And in 50% of the cases, she happens to use the right goggles. But in the other 50%, her goggles will have the wrong color for the respective card she wants to see. In order for her to remain unnoticed, Eve will prepare a second deck of cards, according to the symbols that she saw, and send it to Bob. As before, Bob will look at the cards using different goggles. Afterwards, Alice and Bob will again compare the colors and omit the cards where Bob has used the wrong color. But this time, something is different. Alice and Bob find to have symbols that do not match, even though Bob has used the proper goggles. Thanks to the special properties of quantum cards, an interception of the card deck will inevitably produce a certain error rate that Alice and Bob can determine by statistical comparison. If they find the error rate to be lower than a certain threshold, they can be absolutely sure that nobody else has any information about their key. This is an example of how we implement this card game in the real world. But that is material for another video.